A couple days after installing the solar, our electrician started work on fitting the Powerwall 3. Usually, both the solar and battery would be installed on the same day. However, because this was one of the first Powerwall 3 installations in the UK, our main shipment of Powerwall 3 units hadn't hit the docks in Southampton yet. So we got it put on a plane from America in time for the installation, which unfortunately didn't quite line up with the solar installation date. The day after the Powerwall 3 touched down at Heathrow, we sent two of our senior electricians, Simon and Matt, round to the house to start fitting it. The first step was to get the six solar DC strings from the loft space to the Powerwall 3 location by the garage door. In order to keep the cable run as neat as possible, we ran the DC strings out the side wall of the loft and down the side of the house in a white trunking to match the colour of the wall. Our installers take great pride in their work, as you can see by how neat Simon's DC cable run is. The DC cabling was then clipped along the brickwork at the bottom and fed into the garage wall. In this case, it was a two-person job to get the cables through the loft wall neatly. But once the cables were through the wall, Matt went off to mount the Tesla gateway to the wall and start wiring it, which is a very big job that must be done properly by a fully trained electrician. Sam's Tesla gateway was installed next to the consume unit in the garage. The incoming electricity supply to the house is on the other side of that garage wall, so the cabling is all fairly straightforward and the gateway is in the optimal location. The gateway takes a while to install as there's a lot of wiring to do and it's quite complicated. In order for the power wall system to be able to keep the house running in a power cup, it has to be able to island the house from the grid. This involves running the mains power through the gateway so that the gateway can disconnect the house from the grid in a power cup. You also have to wire the consumer units that you want to be power cut protected into the gateway as well. On the tech survey, Justin will discuss if it's worth backing up any major loads at the property. For example, you usually wouldn't want your swimming pool to be running from the battery in a power cut. Some customers do want their EV chargers to run in a power cut, and in Sam's case, we did put that on the backup side of the gateway. When the DC run was done, it was time to mount the Powerwall 3 so that Simon could work on the wiring for that while Matt finished off installing the gateway. For Powerwall 3, Tesla has created a dolly that makes it much easier to mount and maneuver the unit. It's very easy to use, you just lie the box down and put the dolly on top of it. The dolly has two arms which you then secure to the Powerwall before simply lifting it up and wheeling it over to where you're going to mount it. When the dolly is in position, you then use a standard power drill to operate the lifting mechanism and mount it on the wall bracket. Simon then started running the cables to the Powerwall 3. The cables that need to be run to the Powerwall 3 are an AC cable, which transfers power from the gateway to the Powerwall and vice versa, a communications cable so that the Powerwall and gateway can talk to each other, a LAN cable so that the system can access the internet, and finally, the six solar DC cables from the roof. After the wiring for the Powell 3 and gateway was complete, it was time to commission the system. The commissioning process for the Powell 3 is very straightforward. It just involves the installer opening up the Tesla app and running through the setup. For Sam's install, this took about 20 minutes. There's a cool moment where the Powell 3 flashes red, which only happens during the system commissioning and never again following that. We commissioned the Powerwall 3 without the frosted glass pane on the front, just so that if there is anything wrong and the commissioning doesn't work, we can make changes very quickly. Part of the commissioning process is a power cut test, which is when the Powerwall switches into off-grid mode and the gateway cuts the main supply off from the grid. Finally, after commissioning the system, it was time to put the frosted glass pane onto the front of the Powerwall 3. Simon then ran through the system controls with Sam and showed him how to use the app and monitor the system. Watch the final video in this series to find out more about what you get from Spirit Energy when we hand over the system and complete the project.